Hello, and welcome back to Daltodity. Can you even understand me in these things? You may be asking yourself, Dalton, why are you outside where the audio quality is probably crap and the lighting is even worse? I don't know. I'm just trying to be outside and enjoy the beautiful fall weather, or at least as close to beautiful fall weather as it gets in Texas, so. Anyway, now may come as a surprise coming from somebody who literally started a YouTube channel for the sole purpose of making weird special effects tutorials. But growing up with my mother who's afraid of anything remotely scary, I never did anything cool or creepy like decorating until this year. And no, I'm not talking about these awful fangs I made for myself. Having these in my mouth, it just I really just feel like licking them, like a person that just got braces, or one of those really cringy boys on Musical.ly. Anyway, my mom does not like anything creepy or spooky or anything, so our house just sort of had like a cute fall decor kind of whatever. And my sister was like, "Hey, let's make some cool Halloween decorations for the front of the house," and I was like. Uh, okay, sure. And I was like, oh, totally, I'll film a tutorial for it. Didn't really film a great deal of all of the making it part. So it's gonna be more so like just a little making of, like one of those home renovation shows or something. Just like a little before, a little bit during, and some after, except for the part where I uh, realized I also forgot to show what it looked like before. We really just did the front porch walkway area. If I can find some pictures, I'll insert them now. I mean, nothing wrong with it. It's nice, cozy, welcoming, but it's not spooky. Hello. All right, it's daytime, so you can actually see what I'm trying to show you and stuff. All right, so the first thing we have walking up is the big piranha plant. Uh, this thing we made a video of last year, so you can actually go ahead and check that tutorial out. It's pretty simple. I basically just reused everything for it, just gave the stem a new paint job and redid all the leaves down here. They were originally made out of paper, so uh, I'm sure you can see the issue with that there. I also redid a little bit of the hosing attachments and whatnot for the fog. These hoses will be hidden on actual Halloween night, but I just have them exposed so I can show you what's going on. So this one right here, the black hose going into the back of the pot, that is where the fog comes in. And it just runs right over here to a cheap 400 watt fog machine that we got at Walmart. And then you also see there's some clear vinyl tubing shooting out of it and I have it hooked up temporarily right here as you can see to an air compressor that way there will just be a steady stream of air shooting up through the stem out the mouth through that tube right in there that is just so since we are using such a cheap fog machine and it's traveling such a far distance it'll just help the fog shoot out of it rather than just sort of drip out. And I actually also added some scents to the fog juice this year. I'm using the Professor Mysterious brand. Inside the plant I have a mixture of this Midnight Forest and the cozy campfire just to give it a woodsy smell. And then inside the cauldron, which you will see in a little bit, has a vanilla smell just to spice things up a little bit. All right, so that's that guy, but you've seen him before. Let's move on to something that you have not seen. He is right there, and then if you switch right over to the opposite side, we have this small pumpkin topiary. Now, this was actually originally built last year as well, to be for last year's Halloween, 
but I never actually edited or posted a tutorial for it. But it's basically just the hollow carvable pumpkins from Michael's Craft Stores that I carved and then I retexturized them using the methods that I've shown in the past of how I do my pumpkins, which I do have a tutorial for actually. And I just layered them inside this pot on top of a PVC pipe. So this guy, again, another thing from the past, you never seen it, but it's existed. So now let's go ahead and turn towards the main stuff right here. And first I will talk about these guys up here. Before I tell you how I made them, I would also like to mention, if you were not already aware, my sister and I are huge fans of the Dollar Tree. And when we had this idea to redecorate for Halloween this year, we originally intended it to be like a get everything at Dollar Tree kind of thing, mostly because uh, I'm broke. And that's definitely how it started. We went to Dollar Tree and we started getting things, but as anybody knows that's ever been to Dollar Tree, it's a little bit addictive and we did not really stop once we got there. This is the cutest thing ever. It definitely was not a cheap build at all. The one thing we found that we uh, really liked were all the pumpkins. And uh, we sort of just ended up getting a whole box. I think in the end we ended up using around 50 of them. So that was $50 just on pumpkins. And then we used a crap ton of other stuff too. So that's great. So, yeah. As you can see, these were made from those $1 Dollar Tree pumpkins. Basically what we did was we just carved a bunch of them with all of their different faces. Took quite a long time. And we thought it would be really cool to take these cafe lights that I had sitting around that I originally used to make some tangled lanterns for my sister's birthday party and turn it into a really cool viney pumpkin light thing. <laughs> and this is one thing that I definitely do have footage of that I can show you and that is all of these really cool, very cheaply made actually vines. These vines are actually made from rope. Now most of the rope I used to make these vines, I actually already had sitting around my house, so that was good. They were free. I first set up a ladder with some three random sticks that I had sitting around. I basically just unrolled all the rope and stretched it out and just sort of ripped it apart in different places, unraveling it a little bit, and also tied on some smaller pieces of like twine or jute in little random places just so it have all these wonderful extra dangly bits hanging down from it as you can see and then from there I just took some of the great stuff expanding phone you know the stuff everybody uses it with some gloves on I go ahead and I just squirted some of the foam into my hand and then rubbed it down the rope and that was it I just lathered it on there I didn't put it on too thick I really just wanted to sort of get it into the rope. This is just to give it a nice texture and hide the fact that it's a rope. It only took like 30-40 minutes because it was so thin to set and then it was time to paint it. I first tried just dip painting it lots of birds today. But the easiest thing ended up being to just spray paint it. So I painted it with this dark sort of olive green and also with a little bit of black and some brown. Let that dry and voila, you have vines. Made a crap ton of these more than I probably actually needed now that I think about it. But you can never have enough vines, right? Happy Christmas. Zach, stop. Merry Zach, Christmas. stop. You're getting trouble. These actually were the cheapest part of this whole project. Probably only cost me around 20 bucks to make all of these. I mean, now I got a whole compilation of vines that keep me alive. 
<laughs> anyway, now it's time to put the pumpkins and the vines together to make something cool. So first I just took the strand of cafe lights that I had. It had 12 lights on it. I just go ahead and cut a hole in the top of the pumpkins, popped them on, and then I simply just wrapped the vines around it. I ended up going over it twice with the vines. I just spiraled them on in one direction, attaching them with zip ties. Then once I got to the end, I spiraled them around going in the opposite direction. Again, attaching it with zip ties and just letting any of the extra dangly bits hang off rather than wrap them on. Gave it a nice cool look when everything was finished. And that was it, honestly. And I'm honestly extremely happy with the outcome. As you can see here, I added some extra vines hanging down just to make it extra spooky. But yeah, I just hung them like this. And then the extension cord drops down here and I wrapped that with some vines as well to hopefully try and disguise it. And the next thing you see walking up are the pumpkins, the actual pumpkins that me and my friends and family carved. No, there's not mold growing on it. I sprayed on some diluted brown paint because I thought it would look cool, but it really didn't. Friend did this one. I don't really know what's going on with it. Yeah. Anyway, the next thing we're going to talk about are these guys here, the nice new pumpkin topiaries. We saw all those pumpkins in Dollar Tree, you know, the ones piled up in the basket, and we thought, let's make a pumpkin arch over the door. And then we realized, oh, we would need at least like 60 more pumpkins for that. And we didn't want to spend that much money. So we settled on why not some big like pumpkin sort of topiary towers on each side and that's what we did. And as you can see behind me, they look awesome. The first thing we needed was a really cool decorative pot base to start with. I don't know if these types of pots have a name, but I do know that they are extremely expensive. The cheapest ones I could find were like 60 bucks a piece, and I definitely did not want to spend that much money on them, so we just DIY'd some ourselves. Still ended up being around $45, $50 to make two of them. Again, this ended up not being cheap at all. But basically what we did was we took these two cheap plastic pots, then just added some of these decorative wood pieces. I just sort of bolted and glued them together. The glue I used was just a little bit of liquid nails. Then we set these PVC pipe pieces in place using some quick set cement. We filled these up and then they were nice and secure and bottom heavy so that they would not fall over. And then it was time to paint them to look more realistic. First just went over with a cream paint, then I used some of that textured stone spray paint and they were looking pretty good. Also added a round piece of foam at the top, just as a nice base for all the pumpkins going on it. Then it was time to start stacking up all of the pumpkins that we had carved. We also wanted lights running through them, so we go ahead and add them at this stage as well. I just took a string of 100 warm colored Christmas lights to each topiary. I bunched them together in bunches of about five and just shoved them in the back through a hole in each pumpkin. I also used some more liquid nails here to go ahead and glue them together. If you don't want to use liquid nails, the great stuff would actually work really well here as well. In a few cases, I also added in some finishing nails just to make sure everything was nice and secure. I go ahead and just start stacking them up. I started with a base of five pumpkins, then three on top of that. And then this is the first time the PVC pipe comes in handy. I just drilled a hole in the bottom and top of one of the larger pumpkins I have. We figured just a bunch of these small pumpkins wouldn't look that great in the end, so we added one of these big guys, and he also helped keep things nice and secure as well. Then we just continued stacking on top of him as well until we had a finished product that we liked. We decided to let them sit at this stage overnight just to make sure the adhesive had dried completely. Then my sister, this is where she comes in for a lot of this, started filling in all the empty spaces with these leaves that we actually got at Walmart, not Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is ripping you off. Theirs are $1 per bunch. Walmart sells them for 97 cents. Honestly got so freaking many of these. I thought it was a little bit overkill, but we ended up using every single one of them. 
we just go ahead and filled in all the spaces with these fall leaves and then took some more of those vines that we made earlier and wrapped them all in and around then filled in some more spaces with flowers and some spanish moss and some sheet moss and voila they were finished and they look so amazing i'm honestly so proud of these i don't know where i'm going to store them all year but uh now it is time for the centerpiece which i have zero footage of me making it whatsoever so i will just try and describe it to you if we come right around here to the back side you'll see it is just a round wooden base and then I took three foam board pieces as sort of supports. That's what this is right here. One, two, and three up the sides of it. And then the top of the table here is just another piece of foam. And this is just one inch extruded polystyrene. Uh, the same sort of stuff we used in our fake rock wall building tutorial. I then wrapped it in one whole roll of cling wrap just over and over again. That's what all of this right here is. And then I just heat shrunk it. Ah! Oh, I'm barefoot, don't look. I just heat shrunk that on there and then spray painted it brown, adding in some black and green as well. Then I wrapped some of the vines up the bottom, added some more moss there and there. That's pretty much it. Oh, but also it shoots fog. So if you remove this, you'll see there's a little PVC pipe there where the fog comes out of. That pipe goes all the way down the middle through a few connectors where it sizes up to attach to this old broken pool hose here. Again, this hose is exposed right now just so I can show you what's going on. It will be covered up Halloween night, but this hose goes all the way around past the plant and meets up to another one of those cheap 400 watt fog machines from Walmart. But yes, the fog goes there and then it shoots out the top there. It was shooting straight out, but I did not like that. So I just took this cheap dollar store Tupperware container, drilled some holes in the bottom of it, and stuck it on top of the pipe right here. And I guess I could actually turn on the fog machine and show you how that works right now. The fog comes up, fills it up, and then shoots out the bottom of the container so that it fills up the whole cauldron rather than just shooting straight up as it does when I take it off. I'll also be adding in some LED lights to the bottom of this just for some color and oh my God, the vanilla sit in that smells so good. I originally wanted to have the fog coming out of all the faces here, but I figured it would probably just end up turning into like a big fog scepter, which really wasn't what we were going for. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This is what it looks like during the day. And now I guess I should show you what it looks like at night. <laughs> I hope you enjoy my lovely Halloween slash fall decor. I used denture glue to glue in these fangs that I made. It's all over my tongue. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get these out. <laughs> Super. Anyway, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I did. I actually had a lot of fun. It's the first time in a long time I just did something kind of for myself, for my family, for, I don't know, just something for fun without being stressed. I know I haven't been posting a lot of videos, and I'm certainly not going to promise that I'm going to continue to do so, but life's going pretty good for me right now, I'm choosing not to stress out about anything, and I'm definitely not going to force out a bunch of videos, but yeah, I really like it, and I hope you guys did too, because, like I said, it was really fun to make. And I got to play with a bunch of fog, so. Uh -huh. How'd you guys enjoy that? So, yeah. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe. Bye! Happy Halloween!
Oke, okay, Bruno, bye.